Greetings, and uh, it's the day after the American election, and it has been a massive surprise to most people in America, and obviously to many people throughout the world. Donald Trump, uh, real estate developer, entrepreneur, uh, reality television show host, with all of his uh, fame and his foibles, has won a very powerful victory and will be the next president of the United States of America. He has had no political experience. He has never run for office or held a political office, and this is his very first political job, the most powerful office in the world. Obviously, half of the population is terribly upset. <laughs> Obviously, the other half of the population feels considerably better or is very, very happy. And uh, now, what is going to happen? What I'd like to do, uh, as, a, as I got ready to do What It Takes Radio, I said instead of just going into the audio studio, let me go into the video studio and uh, let me record the radio show <laughs> on video and send it out that way on that part of the internet, the vital <laughs> digital part of the world. A number of years ago when I was a school teacher, I taught a class, and this was to actually high school juniors. These were 16 years old, 17 years old, and it was a very sophisticated class called Revolution. And what we did is revolution in the history of men and women, and we examined those so-called revolutions, the American Revolution, French Revolution, Russian Revolution, some of the Reformation revolutions that we were in the religious sector, uh, then the contemporary revolutions that were flaming all about, uh, particularly uh, all over our world. And what we were trying to do is to better understand what was going on uh, and what we could learn from uh, revolutions and how we could learn from them and how we could be better citizens in the world we live in. One of the things that uh, got me from that was I discovered that one of the themes of those people who were involved in revolution uh, was a, a little phrase they like to use, and sometimes they gave it to the title of their books or manifestos, and it went something like this, what is to be done? What is to be done? And then, of course, they would try to answer that question. Well, now that Donald Trump <laughs> has been uh, selected and will take the office as the President of the United States, does that mean anything to you? And uh, in some of our past programs, I asked you, uh, think about, you know, if Donald Trump wins the election, what does it mean to you? Uh, what will you do differently? If Hillary Clinton wins the election, what does that mean to you? What will you do differently? Now, most people in the world, it doesn't matter. And for some of you, it might matter a lot. But the point is, whenever there's a significant change, it's good. Because this is what it takes to simply take a reflective uh, emotional, relational, spiritual time out and say, what should I do now? One of my favorite stories in the Hebrew scriptures relates to the fact that the legendary king of uh, the ancient kingdom of Israel, King David, it said in one of the narratives that he had a group of men and women who were kind of his uh, chief advisors. And the term given to them was that they were the men and women of Issachar. Issachar, I-S-S-A-C-H-A-R, if you want to look it up. And here's what it said about them. The men and women of Issachar understood the times and knew what to do. Understood the times, knew what to do. That's part of what it takes <laughs> to be able to try and understand what is going on and then know what to do. And right now, uh, all of us who are involved in America, we have to make that question because this is going to affect our health care, this is going to affect our business, this is going to affect our taxes, it's going to affect a lot of things for those of us in America. And uh, obviously it may have impact on the business of the world that you live in. 
Uh, Donald Trump has said something a great deal about trade policy. Well, there you into the you're into the worldwide world of commerce. What does that mean? So, what are you going to do? What is going to be done? May I suggest, and I just put a few thoughts together. Here are three things that I think we better understand about what's probably going to happen. More and more, we're going to discover that even though he wants to, uh, we may bring some jobs back, but more and more, the jobs are mostly going to be the jobs that we can create ourselves. Not the ones we find, not the ones that someone offers to us. Uh, there are going to be all kinds of jobs, but most of them will be within the entrepreneurial, the innovative sector. It's where you live in that scary uncertainty of getting up every day, as I say, putting on your makeup, <laughs> putting on your outfit, putting on your costume, and going out there and creating value for somebody else in hopes that they will give you compensation, they will pay you. That's what it's going to take. Secondly, I want us to also understand that uh, the mass media of the internet will change everything about life and business, and you have to learn how to create your online career and business platform. That's right. Every business is in some respect going to be a digital business, and you need to learn how to put on the show, do the radio program, do the video resume, do exactly what I'm doing. You're going to have to learn how to do that and do it well. Thirdly, I fundamentally believe that we're going to discover in the midst of all of this change and uncertainty an eternal truth. Both a threat and a promise, we are not alone. That's right. There is a spiritual reality in the world which you need to deal with. That's just there. You say, well, I don't believe in that. What you believe in doesn't matter. What I believe in doesn't matter. It's what is. And if there is that deep sense of transcendence that the power and the energy and the authority and the wisdom and the stuff we really need in life to do what it takes is not just a, an educational or informational or technological issue, but it is truly also a spiritual issue. You better take some time to figure out what that might be. Just a thought. Let me also encourage you to uh, learn a little bit about what you can, uh, as much as you can, from other people. Now, when this first Donald Trump thing began, I took the risk and I said, I'm going to learn about the guy. I didn't know. He wasn't my first choice. He wasn't my second choice. And I don't know if he's anybody's choice that I know of or if you know of. Probably do, but I won't tell you. But here's what happened. I said, I'm going to figure out what's going on. So I actually did this. You know, <laughs> I read about the guy and I read the things he wrote. Went out and about five or six of his books, and I read them. And I learned a great deal about the guy, which later on I could much better understand. And I did a course called The 10 Things You Can Learn About Life and Business from the Donald Trump Phenomenon. I mean, it wasn't a criticism of him. It was certainly not an endorsement of him, but something was going on. I could see it. I could almost smell it. And I wanted to learn from it. And I came up with 10 things that you can learn from the success of Donald Trump in becoming, at that stage, just a candidate for the presidency of the United States. You can learn this stuff, and it could be helpful and useful to you. The first two. Number one, don't trust the experts, the pundits, the people who claim to know what's going on. Don't trust them. Number two. Donald Trump, of all the people running for president, was the only one who had taken time in his life and business to really understand the media and how to use it. Really, that was it. He knew 
how to use the media. And one of the things he learned from that is you really have to understand your audience. And everybody says, how did he know there were so much unhappy people out there? Well, you know, when you're a media person, you get really good at reading your audience and knowing what's going on. And so one and two. That's why you need to better get yourself ready to do the media. And uh, remember, the world is full of people who think they know and they don't. And that's more and more why you have to become the person who is acquiring your own wisdom, insight, and truth, sharing it with others and uh, acquiring it from others and learning to live within the power of that and oftentimes within the power of that wisdom, insight, and truth that comes to us in true spiritual connection and transformation. That's the deal. May it go well with you. And uh, we'll keep in touch. More on What It Takes Radio. And uh, we'll tell you a little bit more about that Donald Trump course. Maybe you should take it now. Peace. All the best. All will be well. Bye for now.